you're really free. The text is found in Romans chapter 8, verses 1 to 4. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do in that it was weakened by the sinful nature, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful man to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin and sinful man in order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fully met in us we do not live according to the sinful nature, but according to the Spirit. There are different freedoms. There is the freedom of anarchy, where everyone does what he wants to do. In this case, one's freedom often intrudes on another man's freedom. The result may be chaos. There is a limited freedom in confinement, the freedom of a prison. There is the conditional freedom given to convicts on probation. They are free as long as they do not commit a repeat offense. Is the freedom we have like a bird in a cage or a fish in an aquarium? The Bible says much about freedom. Jesus came to make us free. He comes not to confine us, but to free us. Someone said that a shark will grow according to the size of the container it is in. If it is in a small aquarium, it will grow, but it will be a very small fish. If it is in a large container, then the shark will grow and become very large. You are really free. Notice first the totality of this freedom. Therefore, there is that now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. How free do you think you are as a Christian? Some days you may feel that you are a slave to your circumstances. But Paul says something amazing. You are free no matter how you feel, no matter what someone says. Dr. Macbeth says that verse 1 is an exclamation and a shout. He points out that there is no verb in the Greek. It is a very strong statement. It means there is no condemnation now, and there will never be. It is total. Why do people feel condemned? Well, the reason is that they do not understand adequately the cross. Satan desires to make us feel condemned. If he can bring us to have deep feelings of condemnation, he knows that he can defeat us and hinder our effectiveness. Satan is called the accuser of the brethren. He tries to keep us aware of our sin, to constantly think about it, and to overlook the cross. Sometimes people fear condemnation tomorrow. They somehow think that they may fall along the way, and they worry about that. But the message here is, there will be no condemnation tomorrow. The cross moves in all directions. Christ died for sins past, for present sins, and future sins. When Jesus died on the cross, None of us were living at that time, but Jesus died for all sins of all times, for all people. Past sins, that means our present sins as well as any future sins that we may commit. His freedom is not conditioned upon our performance. God accepts us completely in Christ. The key is to be found in the words, in Christ. Listen again. There is the, now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. It does not say there is no condemnation for everyone. It says there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. 
where are we? Alone we would have reason to fear, but in Christ we can expect the greatest freedom, for it is the freedom of love, it is the freedom of a family, it is the freedom of life. In Christ means that God sees us always through Christ, always in relation to Christ. When God looks at our hearts, He does not see the ugliness that is there. He does not see the sin that is there because He looks at us through Jesus Christ. And the righteousness of Christ covers the sin of our lives. If we know Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, Jesus Christ becomes our robe of righteousness. And God looks at us through Jesus. It's not that we're perfect. It's not that we have no sin. It is that we are saved by the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And God sees us always in relation to His Son, Jesus Christ. This is the reason it is total. This is the reason that it is certain. How certain is your freedom in, in Jesus? It is as certain as the freedom of Jesus. How certain is your freedom in the country where you live? Well, it is just as certain as the stability of the government and the guarantees of the Constitution. And the freedom that we have as Christians depends upon the faithfulness of our Savior and the power of our Savior. This is the reason that we are assured that this freedom is total, it is complete. There is no condemnation for us now. There will be no condemnation for us because we are in Christ. And being in Christ means that we have freedom forevermore. Now consider the basis of this freedom. In verse 2, Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. On what basis do we experience this freedom? How do we enter into this freedom? It is not something we can attain. The law could not do it. One man told about seeing a fire that was approaching. He knew that it would be impossible for them to get out of that area. The fire was moving so rapidly. They would not be able to run fast enough to get away from the fire. So this is what he did. He set a fire around them and burned off the area immediately around where they were. They then covered their faces and the larger fire came up near where they were, but of course because it was already burned out around that area, they were safe. We've seen several times in this book, if we've read it, the power of the law. But the law is powerless when it comes to salvation. The law cannot save us. It's not that the law is bad. It's just that the purpose of the law is not to save. The purpose of the law is to show us what God expects, to show us what God desires. The purpose of the law is like a ruler so that we can measure ourselves to see where we are, to see what our needs are. The law is like a mirror so that we can look into the mirror and we can see our true condition. But the law was not given to save, and the law cannot save us. We need more than the law if we are to be saved. If people could be saved by keeping the law, then Jesus would not have come. If people had been able to do this in themselves, of course, there's no person that could keep the law perfectly, even though they think they do, because we always come short at some point. And so even if we could be saved by keeping the law, 
we would be unable to do so because none of us can do that. Only Jesus perfectly kept the law and fulfilled it. The basis for our freedom is the Holy Spirit. He is called the Spirit of Truth. Notice how this is stated in verse 2. It says, Because through Christ Jesus the law of the Spirit of life set me free. He is called the Spirit of life, the Spirit of truth. Jesus said the truth will make you free. The Holy Spirit brings us into the freedom of God. Here Paul talks about the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. In 2 Corinthians 3 and verse 17 we find these words. Now the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Did you hear that? Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty, there's freedom. If we hear teaching that leads to bondage, we can know that that teaching is not coming from the Holy Spirit. Now let's think about the work of the Holy Spirit. How does the Holy Spirit make us free? First, he convicts of sin. In John chapter 16 and verse 9, we find these words. In regard to sin, because men do not believe in me, and verse 10, in regard to righteousness, because I am going to the Father where you can see me no longer, and verse 11, and in regard to judgment because the prince of this world now stands condemned. The Holy Spirit convicts of sin and righteousness and judgment to come. He makes us aware of our need of God, aware of our sinful condition. He pulls the blinds open so that the light can enter. He causes us to see our bondage. This is often very unpleasant. We have to face our sin. We have to come to the place where we recognize our need. This is sometimes one of the hardest things to do. People want to cling on to their own way. They want to think they're better than they are. And it's very difficult for some people to say, I am a sinner. I am in need of God. And yet, until we come to this place, we cannot be saved. If a man does not feel that he's sick, he usually will not go to a doctor. And so, as long as we deny our sins and refuse to face our sins, we will not come to a Savior. No, we have to recognize our sins to be able to say, yes, I have sinned against God. I am a sinner. As long as we pile on things to cover up our sin, we will never know God's freedom. The work of the Holy Spirit is to make us conscious of our sins, to make us aware of our need. The Holy Spirit shows us Christ. He is our teacher. His work is to testify about Jesus. Notice these words in John 15 and verse 26. When the Counselor comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. Wherever the Holy Spirit is working, you will always know that Jesus is being exalted. Jesus is being proclaimed. The Holy Spirit tells us who Jesus is and what he has done. When the Holy Spirit is working in power, there will be lots of talk about Jesus. What John said is what the Holy Spirit always does. When John saw Jesus, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes to us and he says, Look at Jesus. Look to Jesus. See what he has done. Jesus died for you. He is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So the Holy Spirit always 
points us to Jesus. He convicts of sin. He points us to Jesus. The Holy Spirit births us. He causes us to be born again. We are born of the Spirit. This is where freedom begins, with birth. Is the baby free in the mother's womb? In one sense of the word, it, but it's a very limited freedom. He really becomes free when he's born. And the little baby then can grow and he can run and eat and talk and do so many things that he could never do when he was in his mother's womb. If we want to experience the freedom of God's kingdom, we will have to experience the spiritual birth that Jesus talked about. Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, ye must be born again. Not maybe. You must be born again. We must enter the kingdom of God if we would experience his freedom. The work of the Holy Spirit is to bring about spiritual birth in our life. This does not mean that God destroys our personalities. It means rather that the Holy Spirit changes our life. We enter into a new relationship with God. Our sins are forgiven. We are justified with God. We are given the righteousness of Christ. We receive a new standing before God. We are adopted into the family of God. And we become the sons of God. This is the freedom. This is the basis of our freedom. It is the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit makes us free. He convicts of sin. He shows us Christ. And then He gives us life. He works within us to bring about a new relationship with God. Now look at the wonder of this freedom in verses 3 and 4. For what the law was powerless to do in that it was weakened by the sinful nature, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful man to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin and sinful man in order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fully met in us. We do not live according to the sinful nature, but according to the Spirit. Does God just decide to open the doors of the prison and overlook the sin and guilt? Would that really solve things? What happens when parents indulge their children? Well, often the children become even more selfish than before. No, our freedom is more costly and more wonderful than indulgence. Jesus comes to the prison. He takes a human body and lives with the prisoners. And then he dies in place of the prisoners. In other words, Jesus purchased our freedom. The word the Bible uses is redemption. It is a word related to slavery and freedom. Jesus pays the price of the slaves in order that they may go free. The wonder is God's provision. Our freedom then does not come through a mutiny or through an overindulgent prison keeper. It comes through a love which leads to Jesus' death on the cross. This is a freedom that begins at the point of our need and leads to changes within. It is a freedom which will lead us home to the Father. The wonder is our transformation. We leave the bondage of prisoners to enjoy the freedom of sons. The freedom of man is changeable, but God's freedom will last. You have a freedom in your house that you do not enjoy any other place. In God's family, you're free, really free. And this is the wonderful thing about God's freedom, that we become the sons of God. The Bible says, as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God. We become the children of God. And we have the freedom of children. We can go freely before the Father. We do not have to go 
certain special ceremony or formality. As little children, we can run into the Father's presence and we can talk with him anytime, any place. Children have a freedom that other people do not have. And we are the children of God. We're free, really free. In 1838, the slaves in Jamaica were given their freedom. Many of them gathered at the beach. They had a large box, like a coffin. Into that box, they threw chains and things used in their slavery. They then lowered the box into the ground and buried it and sang the doxology. They celebrated their freedom. It is said that some homeless people deliberately commit crimes so they will have a place to stay at night. In the prison, they will not have to worry about food and they will have a place to sleep. Are we sometimes like these people who want the security of a, free, of a prison? God gives us the freedom of light to understand, the freedom of love to live and explore. In Christ, we are really free. Let's enjoy this freedom. Let's tell others about this freedom. There is no condemnation in Jesus Christ now. There will be no condemnation in Jesus Christ tomorrow or ever. We are really free. The freedom is complete, and it is all based upon what the Spirit has done. The Spirit has made us free. And this is the wonder of it. It is the wonder of being the sons of God. We have the freedom of sons. Like those freed prisoners, those freed slaves in Jamaica, celebrating their freedom. We as Christians should celebrate our freedom today. Every day, there should be a smile on our faces. Every day, there should be a laugh in our heart. Every day, there should be a bounce in our steps because we are truly free, free in Jesus Christ. And we're going even to greater freedom in Him. Do you know the freedom of Jesus Christ? Maybe you're living in bondage you're a slave to your lusts. You're a slave to your evil thoughts. You're a slave to some sins and habits in your life. But you, deep down, want to be freed. You know that though you have political freedom, though you have freedoms to move about and to do many things, yet you know that in your heart you're a slave. The Bible says, that Jesus can make you free. Jesus came for this purpose. He came to set the prisoners free. And the Bible says that you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. What is that truth? Jesus said, I am the truth. And the truth of Jesus, the truth of who he is, and the truth of what he has done will bring you to the place of freedom. You don't have to fight to become free. The freedom of Jesus Christ is a gift. What you need to do is to stop fighting and to let Jesus come into your life and make you free. Jesus will deliver you from the chains that bind you. Jesus will deliver you from the habits that are destroying you. Jesus will deliver you from the sins which bring about condemnation and which are pulling you down. Jesus will make you free, and it will be the freedom of love. It will be the freedom of life. It will be the freedom of the sons of God. Would you ask Jesus Christ to give you his freedom? We do not have to beg him. He delights to do this. He wants to do this. He waits for us to ask him to do this, for us to want him to do this. Would you ask him to make you free? Now, Christian friend, 
you know Jesus Christ and you love Jesus Christ are there some secret sins in your life some things that you hold on to that are binding you so that you don't have the freedom that you really ought to have as a Christian you're always worrying about these things and you're constantly aware of them wouldn't you ask Christ to give you the victory over those habits, over those things which would bind you. Maybe as a Christian, you keep remembering some sin that you committed. Maybe it was long ago. Maybe it was some terrible sin. You know that God has forgiven you that, but it keeps coming back to haunt you. My friend, recognize the source of that. Satan wants to bring condemnation into your heart. There is false guilt as well as true guilt. And the guilt of Satan is the guilt which would pull you down, which would harm you. If Jesus Christ has forgiven us of our sins, we ought to turn from those thoughts and we ought to recognize the source of those thoughts of condemnation. For Satan is called the accuser of the brethren and Satan desires to bind you and to rob you of your freedom. Let's rejoice in the freedom of the sons of God. If Jesus has forgiven you, you are truly free. You can stand in his freedom. In the book of Galatians, chapter 5 and verse 1, we find these words. It tells us to stand in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. That is what we need to do to stand in the liberty of Jesus Christ. You are free. You are really free. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for the freedom that you have given in Jesus Christ. We rejoice in the freedom of the sons of God, that it is all through your grace and through your work. Lord, we pray that we may just rejoice in that freedom, stand in it, we may be witnesses to that freedom and we pray for those who do not yet know the liberty of Jesus Christ. We pray that they may be delivered from their bondage, that they may be made free and they may come into the family of God and experience forgiveness and life and salvation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.